Hello everyone, welcome to the Empower Series Online. My name is Clifton Johnson. I'm the founder of the Empower Series Incorporated, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization brought to you by the generous donations of Comerica Bank, thank you, AE Media Group, and you, our viewers in the United States and around the world. Thank you and welcome to the Empower Series. For those of you who want to find out more about the Empower Series, you can definitely go to our website, www.empowerseries.com. We're all over social media. You're on YouTube now, so definitely like us, share us. Do not keep us a secret. You've got to get the word out. The only way people are going to find out about the Empower Series is if you tell them. So don't keep it a secret. When you go to our website, you can find out more about how we deliver hope, inspiration, education, and we connect you to the critical resources that you need to accomplish your goal and take that next step. In the top left-hand corner, if you want to donate some money, we would greatly appreciate that. Today, we're going to get right at it because we're going to talk about a topic that I personally have some experience in because my son just graduated from the Ohio State University Ooh. on Mother's Day. Congratulations, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and for a number of years, we've had a recurring speaker come and talk about how to find money and funding for college so you can graduate from college without student loan. So the topic of today is going to be a 30-day full ride scholarship guide plan. We're going to address a book that our guest is the author of and it's entitled 30-day full ride scholarship guide scholarship search secrets to graduate from college debt free. It is a guided journaling experience. So we're going to step through that each 30 days. Our guest today is Tani Caraway. She is an award-winning educator whose multifaceted educational techniques have empowered countless of students to achieve academic success. Tandy has dedicated her life to serving others, which is the driving force behind College Mode Academy. It's an organization that helps families obtain funding for college, enabling them to avoid the burden of student loan debt. She's also the author of the book that we're gonna go through, The 30 Day Full Ride Scholarship Guide, Scholarship Search Secrets to Graduate from College Debt Free, as I said before, she's been a speaker several times. Uh, she spoke on five steps to get paid to advance your education. She's also been a podcast guest. And without any further ado, let me introduce you to Tandy. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Cliff. And I always love coming here. We always have a good time um, providing these resources to the community. And I've gotten feedback, so I love that. Um, I think the viewers should know this. The first time we did this, I had a student that uh, just graduated from, transferred from TJC. She's up at UNT, but she got a $1,500 scholarship from that first when we did live in person pre-COVID. Really? Yes. All right, all right, congratulations. And yes, and then we have a young lady whose mom watched the recording we did during the pandemic oh, um, yeah. who joined the program. She's over at TCU doing a Bachelor of Science and IT and she won over $170,000 in scholarships. Word. <laughs> you know what, his, so in addition to that, I will tell you that my son, who graduated from the Ohio State University, graduated debt free. He actually was awarded over $120,000 in scholarships to pay for everything. Which um, is always cool. I know, really. <laughs> and at the very end, I'll, I'll share with you more about the things we're gonna talk about yeah. and how the application of that works. And, and I will tell you that I, I did that without the book, just by talking to you. Yeah. And, and so even doing, just listening to this program, if you take action, will get you some results. Absolutely. And That's why I wanted to share that about those students so that you guys know that just listening and take this information and taking action is like, you can get some money. Yeah, yeah, most <laughs> definitely. But then more also on the screen right now is a way for you to get this book. So, the, and how, what's the website to get this book? So to get the book, you go to 30 day full ride guide, 30 day full ride guide dot club, not dot com dot club. Okay. So 30 day full ride guide dot club. And there's links on the bottom of this video in the description section for not only that, how to stay connected with Tandy, but how to get access to the book. And then there's also another website that you're providing to give people access to more information. What's the name of that website? Absolutely, so I have a wonderful gift for you guys. It is my debt-free college roadmap. It takes you from sixth grade to 12th grade, giving you tips for each year, like actually more than tips, strategy, like what you should be doing as a parent and what your teen also should be doing to get ready for college. So you can go to www.debtfreecollegetips.com and get that free gift. 
Okay, and again, the link is on the bottom of the description, in the description yes. section of this video. So definitely go there. If you're not able to do it now, you're just listening to us, that's fine. But go to our YouTube channel, look in the description, and all of this information is going to be down there. What we're going to do in today's program is we're going to go through the structure of what Tandy's program is. So, so the two things is that there's a, there's a college mode full ride scholarship program or system mm -hmm. that consists of at least four steps. Yes. In this video, we're going to go through at least the first two, which is identifying opportunities and then developing a strategy to search for different types of scholarships. Right. And we've kind of structured that there's little eight different types of scholarships that we're going to look yep. at with screen prints and everything. But then the, the other two steps are actually positioning yourself to qualify. Absolutely. And then applying for college funds. Now, completing the first two steps, which is what we're going to go through today, yes. will help will really prepare them to qualify and actually apply for the scholarships? Absolutely. The book has, um, we call them right, right into motion. So you're supposed to be writing about things that's going to put you into action, getting scholarship money. But those journal responses are structured to help you write really great essays. So they're structures that help position you on the application. Um, and then also it gets you thinking about like, wait a minute, I'm a little bit below average in this area. How can I excel so that I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm really showing that I am competitive and I'm a great investment for a scholarship. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and so again, going back to that, so every day the structure of the, of the book is that you have the key point. What, what are you covering for today? Yep. And then what is the actual action, the task? And like you said, there's a reflection piece that requires you to write. Yes. And that's going to prepare you to really be able to write essays and things of that nature. So if you just go through the 30-day plan, trust me, on the other side, it's like wax on, wax off, oh, you'll get it. That's right? it. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through that, the 30-day plan, at, in, in each one of the sections of the types of categories that you would actually um, apply or look for scholarships. Yes. Uh, the other thing, though, is that when you, this book is for who? When you look at so the people who should be getting When you this look book. at the book and you look at the inside, at the very beginning in the introduction, I actually address uh, four different groups of people. And that would be the parents. Like, how, as a parent, do you help your kid go through this guide? I address the teens that are most likely the ones in my audience that buy this. But I also address those people that are going back to college. Like, mm -hmm. if you're going back to school and getting your degree, you may be looking for money too. And some people are like, I didn't even really know there was money out there for us. And um, a lot of single moms want to go back and they tend to want to look for single mom scholarships when the truth is they can apply for any scholarship that says college student on yeah, it yeah. as long as they have those qualifications in their position. So um, it, it, it helps those four different categories. And just traditional college students is the fourth category. Yeah, so most of the scholarships out there are for, let's say, high school seniors getting into undergrad college. Right. But for adults, there are scholarships when you look at the description of who they're for. Yeah. Therefore, anybody that's going through the undergraduate, getting an undergraduate degree. Absolutely. And then they also have people who are getting a college, uh, a graduate degree, which yes. could be for um, uh, undergrad student going straight into the master's, or oh. it could be an adult going back to school. Yeah. I actually sent a scholarship to one of my students who's a third year dental student um, over the weekend, and he got it done the next day. He's like, I went ahead and applied. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, let's get, let's get at it because there's a lot of information to cover. And so the first thing is that what you're looking at now on the screen are the, six, or the eight different categories or the eight, eight different sections of the book. And under each one of the sections are the number of days. So in section one, where we talk about the keys to unlocking your search, we're talking about day one, day two, and three. Uh, the second section, when you look at colleges and university scholarships, it's day four through 11. Um, we look at private and corporate community organizations, it's day 12 to 14. And you can kind of see going across the screen the different days that are grouped by the eight categories. So we want to start um, by looking at the keys to unlock your search. So what are you really addressing in that first section, the first three days? The first three days, I want you to learn more about yourself and how that relates to finding scholarships and getting scholarship money, 
right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are like, I'm looking for scholarships, and they just start typing stuff in on Google. <laughs> but I want you to be more, I want people to be more strategic than that, right? So what I have them do is create a profile, that profile space where I can say, okay, these are the things that you've done. Any area where you see a cluster of a lot of activities, that's where you're hyper competitive at. So you should be looking for those kinds of scholarships. Also letting you know that if you're looking up sports scholarships, for instance, you need to know those other words. So um, unlocking your search also teaches you to look for synonyms and how to do those searches on Google um, to find those local scholarships. Local scholarships are much easier to win. Okay. <laughs> Less okay. competition, right? So um, it's all about letting you know where to search, how to search. So, so what you're looking at now is a website that you've created that mm -hmm. helps create this search profile. Yes. And, and so the website is www.30dayfullride.com and you're seeing it on the screen. And this is where you select different academic clubs that you're involved in. You, yes. you answer questions to create this profile. At the very end of this, do they get an email from you? Or? Yes, they get an email of that summary back that tells them, okay, this is what you should be looking at. The thing I think was always interesting to me is parents will see that and say, oh my God, I don't know if my, sometimes they're like, my kid didn't do, I didn't know all this stuff was out here. So if you're, um, if there's a parent listening that's like in middle school, mm -hmm. that's a great page to go look at and see all the different things your kid could get involved in. If they're like sixth through ninth or 10th grade, it's a good opportunity to see like, what are all the things they could be doing? And maybe you're not thinking those things are related to scholarships, but if it's on that page, it is. Right, so definitely you should be going to this website right now. At some point, stop the video, <laughs> go to the website, start filling that out. And even if you're a senior, you should yeah. fill that out. It doesn't matter what grade you're in, but start getting that information. And then when you're complete with that, when, you're, when you've completed it, then you'll get an email right. from Tandy that will give you a report of what your profile is. And then the other two sections you talked about was identifying key search words. Key or? search words. So a lot of times we just search by the one word that we call it, you know? So sports is also athletics. Mm -hmm. It could also be team player. Like there's some other words that you should be using. Um, when you say, for instance, arts, there, that's such a broad range. Um, but I have students that are into film, so they need to look up film, they need to look up cinema, they need to look up video, they need to look up media, digital media, and they need to go back up top and look for art scholarships as well. So it's important that you know all those words. You could find scholarships local just searching that category only. Okay. That's related to your major. But there's maybe 10 search words you should be using, and most of us would use one. Gotcha. <laughs> so there's a screen you're looking at now that has related word search, and it's called it's Rhyme Zone. Rhyme Zone, yeah. Okay. So that's out there. The link is below. Check that out. And so those, that's the first, the first three days. The first three days. You're just creating your profile, identifying different related words of where you need to be searching. Right. And then we move on to day two, which is actually beginning to look for scholarships. Yeah. Right. Now we're trying to get to the money. <laughs> it's not that we weren't before, but we're really looking uh, and setting you up with that first section in those first three days. The next days are critical. Colleges typically are going to give you the most amount of money, mm -hmm. right? So um, if that is the case, if colleges are going to give you the most money, then you need to be prepared to know where to find their money. <laughs> yeah. And the first thing I guess is to come yeah. up with the first, your, your short list of colleges. Yes, the Fab Five. Yeah. Fab yeah. Five, guys. So I created a system where we're looking for your top five colleges, and at each one of those colleges, you're looking for these different scholarships that apply to you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the reason why we do it that way is it's just systematic. You don't miss something, right? Okay. Maybe something doesn't apply to you right now. Um, if it doesn't apply to you right now, but you might do in the future, you want to make a note of that. If, if you're like, I'm never going to be an athlete, <laughs> and that's day eight, you know, what you do on day eight is do those Google searches that you came up with on day three. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Okay. So when she got your five colleges, which mm -hmm. is what my son actually, he, he had his five colleges that he went to look at. <laughs> yeah. He focused on that. Then you start with, there are different types of uh, scholarships you can look for. Like there's automatic scholarships or national yes. scholarships. Tell Absolutely. us about those. So at the automatic scholarships, typically your school is going to say, if you have this GPA, you have these test scores, we will automatically give you the scholarship. There's also, um, under that automatic category, I'm really excited that they kind of, that they brought this back for African Americans. Mm. Um, there used to be the National Achievement Program. Now there's a National Recognition Program for African Americans 
Hispanic, rural students, and um, indigenous. Really? Okay. Yes. And there are colleges that if you get that national recognition, you automatically are awarded money. So Texas A&M College Station gives $6,000 a year if you get that distinction. So, so how do you get that distinction? Um, so sophomore, they start looking uh, freshman, sophomore, junior year. You can pass two AP exams with at least a three. Mm -hmm. Or you can be ranked in the top, I believe it's the top 3% of your state's students in that category. So if you're in the top 3%, we're in Texas, the top 3% of students on the PSAT, you can get that distinction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and that's, really that's one thing. One. So, so you got automatic scholarships, merit. Mm -hmm. You also have automatic based on your SAT and ACT PT. scores. Yes. Right. And then you also have, um, you were saying that you can look at need-based scholarships. Yes. So definitely when you start looking at Ivy League and some of our uh, top tier colleges that are really competitive, mm -hmm. one of the reasons they're so competitive is those schools are need based only. So um, Ivy League and other schools like Johns Hopkins will base it strictly on your income. They, right. There's no quote unquote merit because everybody is so competitive. Everybody is high performing there. Um, and so at those schools, you're automatically awarded based on your EFC from the FAFSA mm -hmm. and their what they call institutional methodology. So they will also often have you do a form called the CSS, and a lot of people don't know that. So the CSS is an additional financial aid form. Right. Um, there's 400, about 400 colleges in the U.S. that use that form, and they go, they're way more intrusive okay. <laughs> with the questioning, but they come up with your EFC based on that. Um, Wesleyan is another college I have a student at that uses that. So, yeah, those uh, private colleges that are competitive typically use that method. And then uh, on the screen now is a... I guess it was called a FAFSA forecaster. Mm -hmm. It's no longer available. It's no longer available, but there is a student aid estimator. So guys, okay. student, if you Google student aid estimator, it's provided by the federal government. There's some other EFC, if you Google it, EFC calculators, but I like using the federal one because, you know, they're the ones doing the calculation. So that's going to be the most accurate. I suggest that you start doing that um, calculation starting around the sixth or seventh grade so that you can start saying, okay, the college is expecting me, um, or the government is going to expect me to pay $10,000, right? right mm -hmm. A year. And if my kid doesn't get the scholarships to cover that, I for sure, I'm going to need to pay that out of pocket. Even if they right, get into right. a Yale or Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Wesleyan, they're, they're going to say, give me that 10 grand. <laughs> yes, so, so really your, your expected need is based on your income and a lot of other factors. Right. But that amount, again, if the cost to attend college right. is much greater, yeah. then your need is gonna be the same and you can, right. you can accomplish that by getting scholarships. Right. So even if you that. may not qualify for truly a need-based scholarship because you have a number that's greater than zero. Right. You can still get scholarships to cover that. Absolutely. And, and then the other thing you were saying is that once you know your number, you can actually call colleges and ask them the question of what type of aid do you normally offer students right. with an expected um, family, family contribution, contribution of a certain amount, whether it's zero, whether it's 10,000 or whatever, mm -hmm. and call the schools and ask that question, right? You want to ask that question so you have an idea. Now there's some, you know, some deep dive analytic stuff, but the average person, don't, you don't <laughs> the easiest way to right. go is just call the school and ask if I have a um, EFC of $2,500, like what would my package typically look like from you? If I have an EFC of 10,000, what would it typically look like? Um, just so you know that because some schools do not cover up to the need. Some schools have gaps. So okay. even if you, um, if your estimated need is $2,500, they still may leave you with a gap. They may only provide you with enough aid and leave you with a balance of 5,000. Right, right. So that's something also to note. Um, Spelman does not require, so the, shout out to Spelman. Mm -hmm. They do not require the CSS, but they are a need-based school. Which, so explain what that means. So what that means is they're not gonna be as intrusive <laughs> in your mm -hmm. business but they do provide aid based on the student's need. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so they'll provide more aid. And even though the yeah. school is providing aid, this is not going to provide, like you said, the, enough to cover the full cost to attend. It probably will not. Right. It, in right. most cases, it probably will not. Now, um, well, let's stay focused on this. 
look at those college tips that I sent you. <laughs> Make sure you check yeah. that out because there's some more strategies around trying to get more money from the college and all those things. Okay. And the other thing you can do when you call the college is, is you can ask them, so what funding do you have available for incoming freshman students? Yes. And you can also ask, um, how may I apply for these scholarship opportunities available for incoming students as well? Right. So asking those questions in more than one place is really the key. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't know if you're getting a student aid, you know, because they, they pay students to work on campus in those offices. Right. And so you don't know if you're getting a student answering the phone that day. And you don't know what kind of day the person had on the other end if they're just trying to get off the phone. Or they might just direct you to the to a website. To the website. And even if they do, it's okay to call another department or call it another time and see if you get somebody else. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, the people who are getting the money are the people who are calling up and asking. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so also, if you're an athlete, I, I know that I got an athletic scholarship and yeah. I relied on my coaches mm -hmm. to make tape. And Most people do. Right. And then also I was I was on some of the state, you know, all star teams. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of recognition. Right. And my coach and, you know, colleges came to me because I was in the paper a lot. Right. But there's a lot of great athletes that can qualify for NCAA scholarships, whether right. it's for um, a division a one, two, two or, or three, three college, uh -huh. by first going to this website that's on the screen right now. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about this website, but I guess this is the first step that has to yeah. happen. You should, if you're looking at an NCAA D1, D2, D3 school, you should be on that clearinghouse. Okay. And if you're thinking about getting athletic money, period, it's likely you should be on that. So just go ahead and sign up get your clearinghouse information in there because that's like besides the scouting that they do by the newspaper and some of those other sites and things for each sport mm -hmm. the clearinghouse if you're not in there they're sanctioned they have rules they have to follow so um, the clearinghouse makes sure that you as the student knows what the rules are about engaging with the coach and you're both agreeing to follow the NCAA rules um, you also have the NAIA and they give money um, but they don't necessarily give athletic, quote unquote, athletic scholarships, but they will court a student based on their athletic ability and then go to the front of the house. It's, it's, it's a very murky water type situation, mm -hmm. but I've seen students, of course, if the coach is rooting for you right. with the admissions department and the financial aid, your package looks really nice. So I have some students that have gone in that NAIA track and football. And here's the other thing. So if you don't have a, a, a high school coach mm -hmm. that's really advocating for you as much as you would like them to, yeah. and you're doing this on your own. So the first step is, and it's on the screen here, is to definitely go to this website. Absolutely. And get in the, that system. Yes. And then I would say contact the actual coach that is at the school. Absolutely. Go on the website, contact the coach, mm -hmm. write them a letter and tell them who you are. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself and your stats. Mm -hmm. That's something I often ask students. I'm like, listen, they're like, Miss Sandy, how do you know? I said, I just know enough to be dangerous. I know enough where to point you to next. Yeah. So I don't know all the stats for every position for football or baseball or volleyball, but you should know what the stats are that are important to your position. And you should be able to present that to the coach in that introductory letter. Like, why should they be interested in you? You need to tell them that yeah, in that you letter. You can do it via email and you can find this information because every faculty is identified on their website. Yeah, so find and Twitter, it. Twitter, oh Twitter is the spot for <laughs> athletes. So many students are like, we're not on Twitter. I'm like, if you're an athlete, you better get on Twitter and follow that coach and start posting your highlights um, because they're gonna see it on their feed if you're following them and they follow you back. And that strategy, whether it's athletics, also applies to other departments like fine arts, mm -hmm. or the fine and performing arts scholarships. Yeah. I would say the same thing. Go to the website, identify who the department head is yep. for those colleges or for that department, and then start researching and, and reach out to them. Absolutely. And let them know why you want to attend that college, mm -hmm. um, what talents you have. Yep. What are you bringing to the table? Why, why should they be interested in you? Right. right, exactly. And so whether that's for any department that you're interested in, whether yeah. it's athletics or sociology any or whatever. Specialty, any specialty, um, a lot of students overlook money. They actually give those um, athletic trainer scholarships. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. they give the athletic trainer. So if, if you've done something in the high school, um, you can ask that. One of my students is at University of Texas Permian Basin. 
-hmm. and he's a student coach following and traveling and everything and he's he's on scholarship because of that so we're still talking about scholarships that just are available well, at the, the colleges college. and universities. Yeah, and that's where is, the money is. That's right, where, right. like, I look for students to get at least 50% of their money from there. Mm -hmm. It's an easy, usually the renewal basis is easy. It's the same stuff you got to do in college. It just makes it really easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. and a lot of times, once you get it the first year, it's like you said, it's yeah. all four years. Yeah. So the other section to look for is diversity and inclusion. So, so tell us about the diversity and inclusion scholarships. So diversity and inclusion refers to um, not only a lot of times we think, especially in the African-American community, that we're just talking about our race, but it also has to do re with religion, ethnicity, and um, gender, okay? Mm -hmm. It also has to do with those things. So you want to make sure that you're looking at scholarships and diversity for all those things, not boxing yourself in. Um, sometimes they even prefer students from certain areas. Um, there was a college that was just like, if we could get a student from Montana, like we haven't had a student apply from Montana in two years. Right, right. <laughs> so they're also looking at geographic diversity too. Mm -hmm. So the website you're looking at now is for the Office of Undergrad Undergraduate Research and Major Awards, and this is for the from the University of Houston. Okay. So you can find that there. The next one is California Western School of Law in San Diego. So they have a diverse... Uh, California Western Diversity Scholarships, mm -hmm. and there's a list of scholarships there. Uh, the next one is the University of North Carolina, Diversity and Exclusion. There's a scholarship for minority students. And then here's the University of Oregon, uh, the Diversity Excellence Scholarship. Mm -hmm. There are a ton of different scholarships. So this one that we're looking at now is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Scholarship. And this is from, so this is the state of New York university system. And there's a diversity scholarship for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and then also here's a website where you can go to us. It's collegescholarships.org. And you can look at the minority categories. So there's Asian, black, Hispanic, and like I said before, um, white male. So click there and you can find a ton of diversity scholarships for you. Uh, the last section, is really leadership and community service. Yeah. So tell us about those type of scholarships. So we have to remember the goal of the college is to build a legacy at all times. So they want people that are gonna come to this college and give back. If I'm gonna sow money into you with scholarships, I'm looking that as an alumni, well, as a student, you're gonna actually graduate from this institution mm -hmm. and then you're gonna give money back. And I'm also looking for leadership because College is not like high school, and a lot of students kind of, they, they don't really get that until they're on a college campus. Yeah. Colleges depend on students to lead and run a lot of different facets of the college. So they need to recruit leaders to keep those things going on their college campuses. So that's one of the reasons why they give money for it, because that is part of how they actually run the system, how they run their college day to day. So um, leadership is when you have stepped up. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a role. And I think it's really important to talk about our introverted kids may not actually hold a leadership position like president, vice president, treasurer, anything like that. But they may be stepping up in other ways. So a way that a student may step up is they may be advocating for something that other students want. Um, I have a student who has been doing something called Student with Voices at her school. She chartered that group. Now she's gotten the teachers on board in activism. And so she's in a smaller town, rural, not so much rural, but suburban, where there's a lot of microaggressions at that school. Mm -hmm. And so it's a big deal for a student like her to step up. And she's kind of working behind the scenes. She didn't originally have a leadership position, but now she even has a teacher saying, we're willing to step out front. And, and be bold about our activism. And I think those kind of roles, colleges are impressed by that because they know when you get on their campus, you're gonna be willing to stand up for any injustices you see, and they don't have to fight that battle by themselves as yeah. an institution. Yeah, and so leadership, I like what you're saying because leadership is not just the title positions. Mm -hmm. It could be committee, being in charge of a committee, committee yeah. um, taking the initiative of getting a group of people together and making a difference in an area that's important What's to you. Deal? Yeah. Um, and so showing that kind of initiative, initiative. Makes, that's a a big part. makes a big difference. And you also volunteering consistently for a nonprofit organization could be uh, a You want to go in depth well. with your service. I think it's really, really important for you to find, for students to find their place 
in their cause. Like, mm -hmm. what is that cause that you're passionate about? And you may not, you may not serve. Sometimes I see students switch organizations, but it's still that same cause. Like it's right. the same cause. So I've seen students that are, you know, really passionate about animal welfare and things like that. And maybe they were with the SBCA, but they found out that, uh, or they were with a shelter and they found out that it wasn't a no-kill shelter. So they moved and started serving at another shelter. That's okay. But I think students should really demonstrate that they have a cause, something they're passionate about that they can bring to the campus community and um, even educate other people about that they may not know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Colleges so, like that. So what you're looking at now on the screen are different types of scholarships for leadership and community service at different colleges. So the first ones you're looking at now is at the University of Houston, the leadership scholarships. And these are different types of leadership scholarships. So you'll see the, the website that you can go to mm -hmm. and the actual description. So you can, you can Google Terry Foundation Scholarship or yeah. Franklin and Virginia Law Scholarship. So the Terry Foundation Scholarship is actually at around 15 Texas colleges. Mm -hmm. um, but each college has their own committee for that scholarship. So it is a full ride and it's for students that have demonstrated need. You see, so, and it's there. So it's mm -hmm. out there for you. Uh, what you're looking at now is the University of Texas at San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So there's a leadership and volunteer services scholarship and it's an, it's an endowed scholarship. Uh, there are endowed scholarships and programs yes. mm -hmm. that other um, people and organizations with money right. <laughs> have set <laughs> money aside because of their special cause. Right. And so this is an example, and they have a 2021 scholarship recipient. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Destiny Chan, who mm -hmm. won in two, 2021? Mm -hmm. And so every year you can go there and find that out. So now you have the Office of L LGBTQIA, mm -hmm. Education and Engagement. And so that's a leadership and service scholarship right. that you can apply for, and that's at Texas Tech University Texas. in Lubbock, Texas. Um, and now those are all of the college, all of the scholarships for colleges. Not all of them, just yeah. some. But again, the links are there. You got to do the work. Right now, the next place you can go to are private, corporate, and other community organization scholarships. So tell us about those. So those organizations. Um, I'll start out with telling you about two students, so you have a, a point of reference for this. Um, Haley is down at Prairie View A and M. She got a forty thousand dollars scholarship from Fossey STEM. Uh, she is actually into chemical, um, chemical cosmetic chemistry, <laughs> cosmetic okay. chemistry. And so um, they gave her a $40,000 scholarship to pursue making products. Like one of her goals is to make products for African Americans mm. for their skin. So she told that story and won that $40,000 scholarship. And um, Jalen McDuffie is at Florida A&M University and she won 25 private scholarships. So $76,000 total. So how does she find these scholarships? Or how do you, where do you go to find them? The book. Okay, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Jalen was part of my full ride scholar program and she followed it. Um, one of the cool things about the program is she, she had a spreadsheet of over 300 scholarships. Um, not that she applied to everyone, right. but that she put in there initially to screen mm -hmm. and she handed that down to the other Miami kids this year. So okay. I really love the work and how they're working together and building on each other's success. Yeah, yeah. and so to answer that question too, where you can go on the screen now, you're mm -hmm. seeing their professional organizations and associations. So yes. whatever you're, you're, if it's an architect or a doctor, yeah. you'll say National Association of whatever that field is. Mm -hmm. um, there's foundations, you can search for foundation scholarships. Yeah. And so there are community grant scholarships. You can also check at your Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely, we've had students win a Chamber of Commerce scholarship here in Dallas. Um, they're looking again for students who are probably the type of student that's going to become, if they come back to this community, mm -hmm. they're going to be a member. Um, the FOSSI STEM was because they're looking to sow into the next generation of minority STEM, you know, people that are pursuing STEM careers. So it's really important that you look in those organizations. Um, Alexa Boone is down at Auburn. She's a chemical engineering major and, um, the energy Asso Association of Black Professionals in Energy oh, okay. gave her a scholarship. So yeah. definitely, whatever major you're thinking about, there's a professional organization, probably not just one. There's probably 
you know, some have 10, some have two or three, mm -hmm. but they're giving out money for that next generation who's going to be their legacy, to encourage, legacy, them, to to encourage them to come into that field. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. So yeah. this is this is to give you directions of where to go, mm -hmm. but you got to do the work looking for professional organizations. Yeah. You got to do the work looking for a Chamber of Commerce scholarships. Yeah. You got to do the work looking for corporations. You have to do well. that. So Jalen, the Miami Dade um, Chamber of Commerce, that was one of her private scholarships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so what you're looking at now is a screen that has an example of certain uh, professional associations for accounting. Oh, and, yeah. And so Nesby here, is, uh, was it, is it, no, Nesby is the engineers. Yeah, engineers. And I, 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 so I've got that. Go we'll, we'll address that later. <laughs> so, so we've got the accounting profession. So you got the N American Accounting Association, the American Institution of Certified um, public accountants, mm -hmm. the Association of Accountants and Financial Professionals in Business, the National Association of Certified um, Public Bookkeepers, the National Association of Professional Accountants, the National Association of Black Accountants. Yes. Right? And then on the architectural side, which is where, my, where I'm looking for my son, mm -hmm. you got the American Institute of Architects, the Association of Architecture Organizations, the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture, You've got the Association of Licensed Architecture. Okay. And there's only 2% that are, are black. Wow. You know, wow. So, so that's, yeah. they're looking for opportunities to give scholarships to people of color. And then you've got the uh, American Institution, Institute of Architectural Students. Yeah. And then lastly, you've got the National Association of Minority Architects. Those are just, again, a tip of the iceberg. Yeah, and that's just accounting and architecture. So Dentistry, yeah. pharmacy. They all have their thing. Whatever you want. And I would do. encourage you when you look at like those accounting, anything in finance and related to financial literacy counts. If your major is tied into any of those and that goes back to knowing what you're looking for, those first three days would have set you up to realize that, OK, bookkeeping is still financial literacy is still finance. Maybe you're doing financial um, analytics or something like that. That's not exactly accounting. Mm -hmm. That's OK. Yeah, as well. use entrepreneurship. Entrepreneur, yeah. Or anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also the foundations. You can put search for put your city, mm -hmm. and then say foundations and search for that. So what you're looking at now is the Dallas Foundation. Yeah. So the Dallas Foundation. They got lots you know, of scholarship money. Right. Over there. And, and here's <laughs> the thing that the Dallas Foundation manages money and scholarships for a lot of wealth, other wealthy people. Right. So when you go to that website, you'll see the different types of scholarships that are offered because mm -hmm. it's not just one. And so I would say every city. Every major city has that. And then, so here's some examples of some of the foundation scholarships um, from what we're looking at. So the scholarship, um, scholarship American Foundation, mm -hmm. the uh, Davidson Fellows Scholarship, the Gates Millennium Scholars. Yes. So these are some examples of the foundation scholarships that are out there that you can Google, mm -hmm. search for. Uh, it's just a ton out there for you right now. Uh, we talked about finding scholarships at Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. So there's a step in, involved in that. You can check the website. Mm -hmm. You can send people an email. Absolutely. Right. You can also make a phone call. <laughs> yes. And some of these organizations, too, it's important to point out, they may have a little sister brother type program that they do six mm -hmm. Saturdays out of the year or something. Yeah. P position yourself. That's what the, the that's not in the book, but that's the positioning type stuff. Um, look for those things early. So if they have some like program where you can interact with them, having your face and name already in front of the people who are making the decision goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. And so, so outside of doing your check, checking at home, the website mm -hmm. and sending the email, you can also make a phone call and at, go to an, go to the office yeah. or go to an event. Yeah, and so when absolutely. you want to find out whether these chamber of commerce is, provide scholarships at the end of the day, introduce yourself. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of people who, if they were approached and asked to mentor a young mm -hmm. person, they would say yes, but they don't know how to go about that process. Right. And schools, um, most schools don't have a formal mentorship program where they're seeking that out. So if you're looking for a mentor in your future field, go to one of the, go to one of their events. Yeah. As simple as that. Um, so one of the other sections here is corporate scholarships. Yeah. So what you're looking at now is a screen of all of the different corporations that provide some scholarships. Yeah. So whether it's Blacks at Microsoft Scholarship. Yeah, right? that's a big one. You got Dell Scholarships Program. You got um, the Doodle for Google competition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Burger King has a scholarship program. Coca-Cola Leaders of, of Promise has a scholarship program. Mm -hmm. uh, Coca-Cola Scholars 
program scholarship as well. Uh, women at Microsoft scholarship, Toyota, uh, the Team Drive 365 video challenge. Yeah. So, so there's a number of different scholarships up there that are provided by corporations for you to look at. And, and that's under the section of, again, private corporate corporations and community organization scholarships. So I would definitely want to let the audience know that those scholarships usually are in the fall. If you're playing around with your college applications in the fall, or you start this process later, um, you're gonna miss most of those scholarships are due in the fall. So if you want some of the big corporate money, get started earlier. Get started yeah. earlier. And, and even if you're not starting early, because I'll give you the example of Tyler, you know, yeah. we're, we're behind a year. So if you're a senior, yeah, I would say you may you may miss your first year some right. opportunities. The black but, at, uh, Microsoft college students can apply for, it, but again, it's still due in the fall. Right, yeah. right, and, and then I would say some of these scholarships they're they're annual, mm -hmm. so you may not get it in the very beginning. Absolutely. But if the scholarships are awarding these every year, you can get it for your your first year, your second year in college. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that section. Now, now we've got government. So we got state, federal, and ROTC merit scholarships. Tell us about those. So in that area, you think about states like Florida. Um, unfortunately, Texas doesn't have it, mm -hmm. but Florida and Louisiana have uh, scholarship programs. And Florida is called Florida Bright Futures. I am so proud to say all of my kids got Bright Futures money this year. They did the work, and so they look at test scores and grades. Um, Louisiana has a TOPS program that does the same thing. My Louisiana student got good TOPS money. So those are milestones. Those are automatic by state if your state has that, right? And so students need to be on the lookout and find out if their state has that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have a pot of money that they just designate to the college. So Texas does have money, but it's designated to the college. So right. uh, they have Texas Tuition Equalizer Fund. So if you're going to a private college, um, they'll supplement that if you're a need-based student. Mm -hmm. And so there are, there are monies in Texas, but they're housed at the college. So you have to ask the college for that money, which goes back to why you should be contacting the college like we did in section two. And, and that's why, <laughs> and look, you got the most days there too, right? Right. So, so you've got some overlap where you look mm -hmm. at college money. Some of those college um, scholarships are funded by right. federal and state dollars. Absolutely. And also ROTC dollars. And ROTC. So ROTC, um, you have your Naval, you have Air Force, you have Army, um, and then you have the National Guard as well. So you mm -hmm. have all your branches of the military that have some form of that. What you want to be aware of is some colleges only start their ROTC money starting sophomore year, which was a surprise to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a surprise the first time I found that out, that we had to figure out one of my students, we had to figure out what we were going to do freshman year. Originally, we went in with the plan. We were going to do ROTC from freshman year, but one of his colleges didn't start the ROTC. And so I think it's University of um, North Texas or Arlington. Mm -hmm. You actually have to do a competition. Like oh, okay. you have to do like a physical competition and ranking to mm -hmm. get the ROTC money. Um, some schools have multiple branches. That's something to be aware of. Yeah. And then some schools are satellite branches for another college. So, okay. for instance, right. Prairie yeah. View and that's University right. of Houston, that's a satellite situation with them. Um, little known fact, if you're trying to get over to Howard, a lot of people are like, how do I pay that forty five, fifty thousand 50000 a mm -hmm. year? Howard does have an ROTC program. Yeah, I think Morehouse has a program, yeah. but it's a satellite program. They do. Mm -hmm. Right. They do. So, some of those private colleges that cost a lot of money that you might be like, how can I do that? They have ROTC programs, and... Um, Army ROTC is one of is the only one that I know of where you can actually do reserves to pay back your time. Oh, okay. Yeah, you cool. don't even you cool. don't have to do full time military afterwards. So that's appealing to some people. Well, I want to give a shout out to my second cousin mm -hmm. Simeon Frank who got an ROTC scholarship. Yeah. Well, well he's graduating <laughs> this year as well, and so um, not only is he uh, a recipient of this, but he's just following the, a long um, list of tradition with his father, his grandfather, yeah. who all served. So, well, you might as well get the money and go in as an officer is what yeah. I say if you're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So that's out there too. And then also in the handout that's in the description are examples of different types of state financial aid. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at now the, the uh, ComptrollersTexas.gov website mm -hmm. for financial aid. And you can just insert your own state 
Yeah. So here you're looking at the Florida Department of Education. So yeah. they have a website as well. Um, you also have Michigan, so yeah. Michigan Student Aid. Mm -hmm. So put in your state and put scholarships. So you also have benefit.gov, which is at the federal level, right? right? And so what were you going to say about that? So you can look for fellowships on there. You can look for, sometimes the money is only designated to the college and the college filters out, but mm -hmm. you know where to look for the money now and you know that there's money out there for that. Um, there may be other education benefits you're just not even aware of. Some of students want to study abroad. There's a lot of study abroad opportunities that are tied into kind of like internship and money opportunities tied together on that site. So it's important for students to look at that. So a lot of students think that the FAFSA is the only place to find federal aid, but that's not true. The yeah. student benefit site is also a great place they should be looking. And then now what you're looking at is the ROTC program okay. slide here. And, and so we just talked about four different categories thus, thus far. So this is a lot of work. This There's is a lot, a lot of, of work. This is where when I thought about making this guide and called it the 30 day guide, you'll see that if you are a last minute quote unquote senior or you're already in college, you probably need to do it in 30 days. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you gotta get your list together and get start applying. And, and, and you can do this in more than 30 days. Yeah, you right? can do, I was about to like, say. <laughs> so, and if you are like right now, the time that we'll be showing this and taping, mm -hmm. you're going into the summer. So you can make this and say, I'm gonna do section one, week one. I'm gonna do section two, week two. Yeah. Like you could make a section of the book you know that you're going to work on it week by week yeah um if you are if you have a younger kid what i often tell parents is you know you can just do once a couple sections of the book each summer mm -hmm. you don't have to do it all at right. one time if you got more time if right. you have more time yeah yeah, yeah. And, and so so going back all that we've talked about thus far when we look at the the government uh scholarships are really non-need based these are mostly yeah these are non-need um so that's something, and that's an interesting thing. People don't recognize mm -hmm. that there's none need at the federal and state level. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. go after that money. I would say this about state money. Mm -hmm. Some states have a separate application for that money. Okay. So make sure if you are, if you have a senior right now, that they apply for it. Because sometimes if they don't apply for it during senior year, they, they, miss, out. they miss it on forever. Okay. Yeah. And then now what we're going to talk about are some of the federal and state need-based grants right. that are out there. So tell us yeah. about those. So need-based, we have, everybody pretty much knows about the Pell Grant, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's the most popular grant that people know about. But you also have the Federal Supplemental, uh, Supplemental um, Education Opportunity Grant. Okay. Um, in Florida, you have something called the Florida Resident Access Grant. And so um, that's for students to be able to access different institutions and not only have to go to the public. Public colleges in Florida are very competitive, mm -hmm. um, as they are in a lot of states. So know that typically those need-based scholarships, the financial aid office is in control of those. And they, okay. the, the access grant, there's a lot of access. It has like the word access in it. Texas mm -hmm. has one like that too. Um, you need to apply for financial aid early because a lot of that money is first come, first, first, first serve. Yeah. This need-based money here, um, the student I have, Jeremiah, he is um, a partial Pell Grant student, mm -hmm. and the rest of his package is made up of that athletic scholarship and other need-based grants and merit-based grants. So he oh, actually really? has his full cost of attendance covered, uh -huh. no student loans with a mixture of those um, state need-based, federal need-based, and college merit. So he, mm. his package is non-loan, non-debt, but okay. it's a combination of all those things together. So that's something for people to know is you can put together a package that's not just one thing, like as long as it covers all the costs. And his is the full cost of attendance, not just tuition, oh, okay. um, tuition fees, room and board. Right, books so everything, and everything. Right. Whatever the estimated cost of yep, the estimated so. cost of school. Okay, so what you're looking at up the screen now is a website called the NASFAA, and that stands for the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators. And what you can do is every state has their 
need-based financial aid programs. Right. And you can go there, you can see the image of the state, you can click on your state and find out what type of need-based financial aid they provide. And those are great people to provide it because that's the association <laughs> of the people who um, are in Good charge of financial that, right? aid at the colleges. So they know, <laughs> based on their states, <laughs> what's exactly. provided. So, so that's a resource for you. Again, the link is in the description, but it's here on the screen as well. More work for you to do. And then there is also the website for the federal student aid that mm -hmm. you can go to, and it talks about the basic eligibility for the different federal need-based scholarships as well. Right. And so that's a section. So there's only three more sections to go through right now. Yeah. Uh, the other area is work and community affiliations. So tell yes. us about those. So I call these, this is like honey in your backyard, right? <laughs> Sometimes we miss the money that's right under our nose. <laughs> mm -hmm. And these are easy. Your son got a scholarship based on his grandmother's right. work, right? On, and union on, on affiliation. Union. On union, yes. Yeah. And so a couple places and a couple things I like to tell parents. These kids like to work because they won't buy their own stuff. But if they're going to work, they should work somewhere like Chick-fil-A, where I've had two students get the Chick-fil-A scholarship while they were employees of Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. um, I also had a student, VJ, that got a scholarship from a company called Rover. And one of the cool things about if it's a smaller kind of company like Rover, they gave him that 20, they announced that 2,500 awarded, and he had that money for summer school before he even started summer school. They, that's within great. 30 days, he yeah. had the money in his hand. So that's something to note about these company affiliations. I've even had parents go ask, go ask the question to HR, do you all have scholarships? And they're like, no, but we've talked about it, we've thought about it, well, can I start a committee, can I be part of that, mm -hmm. so that you get it. So I've had students whose parents did that and they benefited, their student got one of those first scholarships that the business gave away. So even if they don't have it, right. go ask. Okay. Okay, because they know when you're a stressed parent you miss a lot more work and you're not paying attention when you're stressed out about your yeah, kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. So um, unions, I don't know of a union that doesn't have a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you need to, this is somewhere where you need to get with your family. The holidays are a great time to do that, to go up to the family member and say, are you a member of a union or to send out a mass text if you have a group chat in your family and ask that because sometimes it's not like it was the grandmother. Sometimes it just is relationship, and if they're having a hard time giving that scholarship away, they may be willing to give it to a niece or a nephew. Yeah. 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 And if someone has been helping to take care of that kid and stepping in as the parent, parent role, parental role, they also may have the opportunity to give them that money. So I definitely say that. And then military service mm -hmm. is one of my favorite things um, because I am really grateful for the people who go out there and serve. So the fact that sometimes we think the only way we can do it is through the GI Bill and the traditional veteran benefits, but people need to know that there are state veteran offices yes. and a lot of them have a, a whole nother set of benefits. They're just local to the state um, that they enlisted in. Mm -hmm. So I have a student up at the University of Utah, they waived his out of state fees because of, because of his parents' service. Okay. Yeah. And then in Texas, we have something called the Hazelwood Act. If the parent enrolled or enlisted here in Texas, they get up to 120 so hours, maybe 130 hours. They can actually legacy, um, declare legacy and split that. If you have three kids and you can say, you know, each one of you get 40 hours of tuition. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's some really cool benefits that sometimes if you weren't part of the GI Bill, you know, things have changed. I think there's like three different, mm -hmm. I, I'm not real good with that legislation, but there's like three different ones that people fall under. The state may be the easiest way to access your military money for your kid. Yeah. So, so again, this is a lot. So workplace, They've got community affiliations, like yeah. every sorority, every fraternity yes. has, a, has a scholarship, religious organizations, organizations. youth yeah. clubs, civic organizations. All of those. And you should be looking, at least one of the clubs you're in right. should be giving out money. Yes. yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not saying that you should only serve because of possibility of money, but I am saying there's enough organizations out there that are doing mm -hmm. really good work, um, that have a really good reputation that it would be great credibility even for most of those organizations that give out scholarships like that, they have really great credibility. Over the weekend, I was searching for scholarships and I saw FIRST, and I used to FIRST Robotics, and I used oh, to be really? a mentor for FIRST Robotics. They're just looking for a kid who was a part of FIRST Robotics ever in their high school years. 
right? Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. And they're yeah. looking for a college student. And so that's why you have to pay attention to what you're eligible for mm -hmm. and everything you've participated in. Because those students that I mentored, I'm no longer connected because I did that as a public school teacher. But if they were in college right now, they would be eligible to ask me for a letter and apply for that money. It was like a $10,000 scholarship. And so I, I would say if you if you've got time. Yeah. So, so so the website that you mentioned in the very beginning that allows them to, like the eight key steps. Or what uh -huh. did you call it to, to that you want them to go to? Oh, the Debt Free College Tips. Yeah. Debt -free college tips .com. So, so you go there and that is really good if you've got time. Right. It's good if you don't have time. But if you have time, yeah. you can really apply it. Yes. Right. And, and go through every one of those eight steps. It's on the screen now. And it's really, it's helping your student be prepared for when they actually do have to apply for these scholarships. Absolutely. But let's say if you, if you were in my situation, <laughs> and I would say, Absolutely. at least my situation today with my son who's graduated, yeah. he decided a year ago that he wanted to get his master's. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, roll up your sleeves. We got to get the book out and start doing the work. But he was tired. This is senior year, so senior itis, senior -itis. Or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And so, gr granted, and I'll give you some examples of his undergrad scholarships that he got because right. he did the work, but now we're, we are like that senior graduating, right. and we haven't really done the work to get the funding because he decided that his fab five colleges were Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Cornell, and MIT. Okay. And he got accepted to four of them, um, not MIT, and, and of all of the ones he wanted to go to, the one that he's decided to go to is Harvard. Mm -hmm. And he decided to go to Harvard because they have, um, so each one of them gave some kind of financial aid. Right. And so Harvard gave him the most. And I'll, I'll show you on the screen what that is. So I say that because I want to give you, I want to give the, the parents and the students hope if they haven't Absolutely. done any of this work, if but they're starting now, they're, gradu they're graduating in May and they haven't done anything, this is where you can start. Yeah, you can right? definitely start. So he got money from a college, uh, there's a 2020, the 2020 grad named Corey who came in over the summer 2020 and got twenty thousand dollars in six days so you can there you go. You, it's possible you, it's possible it's just you got to be intentional and put in some intense work if you're trying to do it in a short amount of time yeah, yeah. So, so so let's do this I'm, I'm, I'm what you're looking at now on the screen is my son's example of his four years at the Ohio State University. Right. The, you know, he started in the 2018, 2019 school year, mm -hmm. graduated 2021, 2020. And so the first top part of the section are all of the different scholarships and mm -hmm. grants he was awarded. And each year, what he was awarded, and you can see some of them he was awarded every four years, such as the, the Allen Host Scholarship Fund mm -hmm. and the Labor's local 423 scholarship, which was his grandmother's, right. uh, um, where she worked. But then you have other scholarships that were just for one year, right. or the, like the first year or the, or the senior year. And then under the grants, you see he got the federal Pell Grant, he got some state of Ohio grant money, mm -hmm. some federal grant money, and then some other grants that were allowed it because of COVID. Okay. But what you can see is every year what he was awarded, and then w below the second half, is his estimated cost of attendance. Right. And what you can see from this, what you should take away is that the total amount for each year that he was awarded never exceeded what was the total cost, cost to attend. Yeah. And so talk a little bit about that to where in most cases you can get like hundreds of thousands of scholarships, right. but you can't get more than what it's going to cost you, to, what they estimate you to attend, right? Yeah, and some Typically. people might be from the old school, so it's good we're having this conversation because mm -hmm. I have parents say that. I myself got $20,000 back in scholarship money my freshman year in college. Those days are gone, pretty yeah. much. Those days are gone. <laughs> so they have created a cost of an estimated cost of attendant, uh, attendance at every college, and based on your major, like they have a general one, now, if you're going into something that has a lot of laboratory science and you need a lot of extra equipment and different things, you can actually ask for an, an adjustment. An adjustment. And an we, adjustment. we've had to do that. And Okay, yeah, and you guys have done that. And so taking that into consideration, you can get it raised so that you um, don't lose any of your scholarship money. But there is the potential for you, if you get over the amount of cost of attendance, um, with the money that the college is giving you and the money from the outside, the college can reduce 
their yeah. scholarship. And actually, that's federal. That The college isn't really making that decision. Um, when it's over the cost of attendance, that's a federal decision. When they reduce it because you got outside scholarships and you're still under, that happens when a school says we're a last dollar tuition school. Um, some schools have tuition promises, but they are last dollar. So as you get other monies in, they reduce it. There's a movement out here to fight that, that they should only be reducing it when it exceeds the cost of attendance. Yeah. And, yeah. and so the other thing to take away from this is you can see that it's not just one scholarship that pay for everything. Nope. So, so you got to do the work. Typically not. <laughs> you, you, you're going to get, if there's a need, you're going to get mm -hmm. some federal and some state money. But then you also have to apply for some of these scholarships came from the school itself. Right. So there was a common application that Tyler filled out, part of the application process. Mm -hmm. And what they did is based on his, his major mm -hmm. and other criteria, they just sent it out to all of the different scholarships within right. the organization. Mm -hmm. And then he got some money back for it. Yeah. The last screen I'm going to show, or the second to last screen I'm going to show you is actually what he was awarded at Harvard. Okay. And so the, the left side of the screen shows that based on the financial information that he sent in, um, that, that he got a tier two grant okay. for $41,250. Right. And that's great. That's money that we don't have to worry about paying right. back. But the cost to attend is $85,000 a year. <laughs> right? And so what he also got was a $2,000 uh, work study mm -hmm. and then an unsubsidized direct loan for $20,500. Mm -hmm. But then the rest of that, that $21,000 and $22,000, we got to come out of our pocket mm -hmm. or do some kind of graduate plus loan. Right. Right. And so the goal is around forty five thousand dollars is not met with free money. Right. We need to find some scholarships for that. Yeah. Now, on the right side of the screen, you see the cost to attend where it talks about the tuition, health fees, loan fees, room board, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the whole if we're working off that cost, it's eighty five thousand. How are we going to deal with that? Which is the last screen. I created a worksheet. Yeah. Where the column to the left are the, is, are the names of the scholarships that we find that we'll mm -hmm. find by going through your model right. of looking at colleges, looking at private, government, mm -hmm. state, right. um, work-related work community organizations. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at all of those right now and we're looking at the year. So because we started so late, we missed some of the deadlines. Right. And so we are able to apply for some of the deadlines that were in February, March, April, and through the rest of the summer. Mm -hmm. But some of these, we found out that the deadline was actually last year. Yeah. in October, November, thing. or even January, and we missed yeah. those. So what I've done is I've created this worksheet, mm -hmm. and I've identified those for not the school year of 2022, mm -hmm. but for 2023. Absolutely. And, and that's what sure you we should be doing. Those. So um, when you're doing these scholarship searches, guys, make sure that if it's a scholar, especially if it's a, uh, the name, you go to the page, and it's a business or anything like that, nine times out of ten, they're going to get that scholarship again next year. So mm -hmm. just put it on your calendar for next year. Put 2023 behind it. And, don't, and, and so look, you want to search. Be on top of it. Be on top of it. And I often tell people 60 days out. Mm -hmm. So if the scholarship was due um, January 25th, 2022, then you need to be looking for the scholarship to be open in December of 2020 of this year. Yeah. So yeah. go 60 days prior to their deadline. That's typically a good space where it's going to be open. Mm -hmm. um, there's one thing I wanted to throw in, Kiffin, when that? I was looking at the notes here. <laughs> Impairment scholarships of students that have disabilities. Yes, yes. We need to make sure that we address that. Mm -hmm. um, those students have money from vocational rehab. And because right now in COVID, we have a big problem at public schools. They do not have their full um, special education, exceptional educational staff. So they, where they normally do a transition art meeting here in Texas, it's called different things in different states and connect them with that liaison that would help them get that money, it's not happening, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So you're, if, if a parent has, that, has a student that has a 504, an IEP, they need to step up and advocate for their kid and find out who should they contact about the vocational rehab money. While it won't cover room and board, it does cover tuition and fees. And then there's other scholarships that might cover the rest of that that are separate, like the, like do these kind of searches for that as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but that's important. I want to make sure I didn't leave them out. Yeah, we got a lot, <laughs> right? So, so here's, what, here's the objective here. The objective is to give you a direction of where to go. Mm -hmm. So definitely come back and look at this video again. Mm -hmm. There's links below in the description section that we're going to more detail. We've got Tandy's information out there yeah. as well. So look, this is about connecting, connecting you to resources. You got a resource here. 
Um, Absolutely. Hopefully this program has given you hope that if you want to attend college and not be in debt when you get out, whether it's grad school, undergrad, or a vocational school, you can do that. Um, we've inspired you to take some kind of action. Absolutely. Not sit on these ideas and not do the work. We've educated you with some more information, and that education is continuously, and we've connected you to a resource. So um, when you, I would like to get your closing comment. You, you deal with this work every day. You, yeah. you, you live it. Um, what would you say to give people hope, inspiration, education, that they could you know, make the difference of achieving the goal of debt-free oh, college? That's a big statement, Cliff. <laughs> but what I will say is this. In two sentences. Two sentences. <laughs> be hopeful in terms of what can be achieved in a short amount of time. I threw in student testimonials to give you guys and to inspire you and show you how other students have been able to do it. Mm -hmm. So if they did it, I want people to take away, if they did it, you can do it with your student too and yeah. be successful. And Clifton's given his success story and he's talking about doing it again for grad school, it's guys. Possible. So it's totally possible. He wouldn't be about to do this again for grad school <laughs> if it didn't work, right? And look, and, and, and we, and look, as a parent, we all do more work than we feel like our kids need to do, right? Right. But at, at, the, end, at the end of the day, we can talk, right? Yeah. Connect with us. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you need more support, um, I have the book, but I will say this. I've been running a Facebook group since 2017 for parents. Okay. And it's at GetScholarDollars.com. And parents come in there. We share information. I do a Wednesday wisdom post just about parenting. Parenting can be hard, mm -hmm. whether they're younger, they're a younger teen, or in your case, they're a young adult. Right. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> we still need that support and advice. And so just be encouraged. Um, you're not the only one going through it. I've seen so many things, and parents always think it's, my kid is only doing this to me. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, you're not oh, alone. You're not alone. <laughs> yeah. So all of all of Tandy's information is is available in the link below. Uh, don't keep this to yourself. Share it with other people because, again, there are other people out there who are not thinking that they can go to college because they can't afford it, but they really can. Right. So, Tandy, thank you. I know this has been a long day for you. Oh, um, I, appreciate I appreciate you coming and pouring into the Empower Series community and just what you do. Thank right? you so, so thank much. you very much. I want to thank everybody for watching, spending a portion of their life and getting this information. The biggest return you can get from this is by you taking action now. So don't sit on this. Take action yourself and apply it and share it with other people. I want to thank Comerica Bank. Thank AE Media Group for making us look good on social media. Absolutely. And, and more importantly, <laughs> thank you who um, you are the Empower Series. So until we meet again, I want you to stay empowered and inspired to thrive. Thank you for watching our Empower Series YouTube video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Remember to hit the subscribe button below as well as the little button to be notified the next time we upload our video. Until then, stay connected with us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your social media flavor is, inspire the world to thrive. See you soon.